Welcome to Season Chasers. I'm Rob Freeman. Those that love nature and outdoor sports spend a lot of quality time looking for adventure throughout the year. The more you study, the more you learn about the peak seasons in nature. It's fun to know when it's best to go fishing or hunting, when it's time to pick blueberries, wild mushrooms, or native pecans. Sometimes the peak season is close to home, right in your own backyard, or it could be miles away near the mountains and the sea. Either way, this program will chase the seasons where the action is hot. Tonight on Season Chasers, it's a combination of silver, gold, and rainbows. Uh, we've been uh, spending a great summer here uh, trying to have some kind of adventure almost every day. And uh, today, we're silver fishing in a river. We also found a an area with some a lot of shorebirds. We get to share these rivers with birds and even some big old bears. Got to see some pinks spawn out in this week's adventure. And uh, came up to a place that uh, is one pool that probably has more rainbows per square foot than uh, any place I've found in Alaska. They aren't real big, but uh, we ended up, well, some of them are, <laughs> but we ended up getting a bite on just about every, every cast. We're going to go looking for a gold mine, and uh, sometimes that includes a hike that's uh, pretty far, uh, even off the, the private oil company roads up here. And if the fishing slows down, we're going to take our turn at a little gold panning in one of these rivers, and uh, who knows what we just might find. Stay tuned, you're going to see you tonight on Season Chase. Thanks for coming along. Season Chasers, sponsored by CP Communications. Come see us at CP Communications, your locally owned and operated U.S. Cellular Authorized Agent in Pittsburgh, Parsons, Chanute, and Fort Scott. Locally owned for over 18 years. Kansas Land Tire, your Goodyear dealer at 9th and Broadway in Pittsburgh. O'Malley Implement, home of the John Deere Gator, South 69 in Pittsburgh. And by Blue Ribbon Farm and Home. And this is the Goofy Goat, right here. We're up on uh, probably the upper part of this river. Um, we've uh, done a lot of uh, time down in the tidal pools in the middle part, uh, down where the uh, fish counter was earlier this year. And as it gets later in the season, which we're in late August now, uh, we anticipate the silver salmon to be migrating pretty far upstream. We've had uh, some high water a couple of times, and uh, uh, so we've hiked uh, pretty far up here and along the way we've seen some really would you, wouldn't you say it's some pretty scary looking bear tracks look at that one <laughs> uh, yeah there's a couple of these that uh, good six eight inch wide tracks and this is at a time when the pink salmon are spawning out and there's several nests just downstream of here that uh, the pinks are getting pretty moldy looking just before uh, they finish their life cycle and uh, it makes it real easy for the bears to pick those off and uh, as we made one crossing up here on the bank, uh, noticed uh, numerous fish parts. <laughs> and so uh, uh, it gets a little creepy sometimes when you think you're uh, walking through somebody's dining area <laughs> and uh, certainly don't want to disturb them. So on any outing like this, we bring a pack with, uh, of course, a fish and tackle. And we even got some gold panning uh, supplies with us today we're going to uh, check out before uh, we run out of time. But uh, whenever we do an outing like this, you got to bring the proper bear repellent. And uh, today, I'm bringing along the uh, trusty old 4570. This is uh, Marlin uh, lever action in the stainless steel. And uh, Ned's got his uh, 44 Smith & Wesson. A little bit of comfort <laughs> that uh, we carry along. And uh, one thing I want to show you about this gun that I've made a little modification on this year. Um, I had uh, a turkey hunting friend of mine. Uh, gave me a gift of a different side of this and uh, what I went ahead and took the uh, standard sight off of the, the barrel right here and there's a uh, hardware to uh, adapt it right into the existing uh, screws and everything but it uh, gives us a rail that I can put all kinds of tactical uh, scopes and things on but it has with it a little peep sight here at the back and uh, I don't need a scope for a 10 yard shot out here and you probably don't need one for that pistol for personal protection like this but I think having the sights this far apart make the up and down accuracy a lot better than if 
the sights are only this far apart. Now I haven't shot it a whole lot and I really don't want to, but I've got four 420 grain Corbon hot loads in here that uh, should be just what we need to get the word across if uh, one of these bears out here gets too close to us. Uh, we're going to try to do our best to share this river with them and coexist, but if they get too close, this gives you a lot of peace of mind. And uh, when you're out in a place like this, you want to want to have all the accuracy you can because when a bear's within 10 yards of you, you're going to be shaking a little bit. And uh, with uh, any kind of encounter that close, there's only really two emotions I'm told that bears understand, and that's fear or aggression. And you might be really afraid, but you got to appear aggressive. <laughs> and uh, been this, there, done that. This really helps, and uh, we'll uh, carry this like I said, on every outing and uh, get to do it again sometime. And remember the number one rule when you see a bear, leave. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but not too fast. Just leave. Let them know we're here and get out of the way. But uh, let's come over here and get a shot of this one track. Yeah, look at where he walked along here. You can see in the, the, in the mud. There's a couple of toe marks too, you can see them. Counting down the days till spring at Blue Ribbon Farm and Home. Now's the time to prepare your garden for the spring weather ahead. Blue Ribbon has hundreds of varieties of top quality garden seed so you can get started. Whether you have a lap dog, a sport dog, chickens, or a goofy goat, Blue Ribbon Farm and Home has all the feeds you'll ever need. You talk about a goofy goat. And this is the goofy goat, right here. Why switch phone service because of bad reception? When you can adapt, like this family, with reception antlers. Say goodbye to adapting to bad reception, and hello to the highest network satisfaction of any national carrier. U.S. Cellular. Hello better. Introducing the Samsung Galaxy S3 for only $199.99 at CP Communications. Hi, I'm Chuck from CP Communications, the area's only locally owned and operated U.S. Cellular authorized agent, serving the local area for the past 18 years. And if you're wanting to go hunting, there's no shortage of upland game birds out here at Pawnee Wildlife Preserve. We're open with the extended season through March, so give us a call at the number on your screen if you'd like to bring out your own dogs or fully guided hunts available. Pawnee Wildlife Preserve, Fort Scott, Kansas. Look at the color. They start getting real red, man. They glow in the dark, they get so red. I like those big hook nose. This is his holes. That means there's a hen down in there somewhere. Or he'd be gone. Well, at least we didn't get skunked. <laughs> Yeah, he's a nice one. He's a spinning fool, though, man. <laughs> See? He's pretty. That's called the Beluga Release. <laughs> it's late summertime. It's about the last week of August. And we're getting pretty far into the silver salmon run up here in Alaska. It's one of the drainages going down to West Cook Inlet. As you get further upstream, the longer these fish are in the fresh water, they use up the reserves that they came with. They're exposed to a lot of sunlight in their clear water. And uh, they start to take on a rosy tint. Still got a lot of power in these silvers. This is a big male. Do my best to get him loose without a pair of pliers. Got hot earlier today and had to put up my coat. And that's where the pliers are. That's my excuse today. Anyway. Keep this fellow in the water because he's past prime keeping condition. And he's got his big old hook nose all wrapped up in this thing. And I am going to need some pliers. You got some? You got some? I think Dennis does. 
I borrow Dennis's flyers all the time. Thank you. You bet. Okay, we got him loose. Gonna get this line off of him. <laughs> Might have been teeth. through his jaw. And then we're loose. There he is. Let's get him, get him going. There he goes. Silver salmon. Let him loose and get Dennis back this set of pliers. That was on eggs. So uh, Ned just got one on a spinner bait. I got mine on eggs. At least there's still a few silvers in the river. Been drifting some salmon eggs here through the deep part of this uh, pool. And the uh, last few casts have been uh, getting stripped off pretty good by these little bait stealers. Well, this bit, little bait stealer is a little bigger than normal. Rainbow trout. And we're going to give you a good look at a wild Alaska rainbow. And then let it loose. Not even going to need pliers on this one. Native rainbow. Look at that color on this guy. Look at the raspberry on him. Gosh, that is so beautiful. I bet he's full of eggs. And goodbye. So am I, but that's all right. They got to eat too. Rainbow trout on a nice clear stream, and we're gonna drift some more eggs through there and see if he's got a big brother. Woo woo. Got a trout? Yeah. It's a double down sink. Trout, trout, trout. Oh, nice one. What did you get there, Ned? Oh, I caught a trout on my fly rod. <laughs> See? All right. I think Dennis has a nice this one. This one's a nice one on. and it's yellow, like that other one. See? Now, which one you got? See, you got I a native. Regular, you got a native trout. Regular rainbow. That's not a regular rainbow. That's a beautiful rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> that's a real nice one. It is nice. But see the difference? Yep. That's, the, that's a native. And this is not. And he's, he's We're going to have to keep that one. Afraid he's eating his last mosquito. Yeah, we're going to have to keep that one. And we're not the only ones that uh, like to walk these rivers. Here's uh, evidence of several sizes of bears that have uh, left some prints in this mud. There's more over here. That's a pretty good sized track. Pretty good sized toe prints. Looks like they went up that away. Let's hope the one that made these is fast asleep somewhere this time of day and staying out of this sunshine. We're enjoying so much. Probably somewhere up in there. What a beautiful place this is. It's just been a, another day in paradise. Out here in Alaska. This guy's just about to run out of gas. These are the kind that are easy for the bears to pick off. And from the looks of this bank over here, they've picked off a few already. More from Alaska, including some critters, next on Season Chasers. One or two, that's just sand. Most of that's disappearing, so... Extreme environments can cause a spontaneous change in DNA, resulting in unexpected power and agility. Introducing the all-new, all-powerful 
Gator RSX 850i. 62 horsepower, a fully independent multi-link suspension, and a top speed of 53 miles per hour. It's a whole new species of Gator. I'm Travis from Kansas Land Tire in Pittsburgh. We offer name brand tires like Goodyear, Dunlop, Kelly Springfield, Mastercraft, and virtually any tire for the job. We also staff ASE certified technicians to provide oil service, transmission and brake work, engine diagnostics, battery service, alignments, and more. We also now have a nationwide warranty and ask us about payment options like Goodyear Credit. Kansas Land Tire, 9th and Broadway in Pittsburgh, and authorized Goodyear dealer, CR ad and names and numbers. Why switch phone service because of bad reception? When you can adapt, like this family, with reception antlers. Say goodbye to adapting to bad reception and hello to the highest network satisfaction of any national carrier. U.S. Cellular. Hello better. Introducing the Samsung Galaxy S3 for only $199.99 at CP Communications. Hi, I'm Chuck from CP Communications, the area's only locally owned and operated U.S. Cellular authorized agent, serving the local area for the past 18 years. out in the river, you might as well pan for a little gold. Uh, we've got a real sunny day here and uh, sometimes in this clear water, fish quit biting. So we're going to try our hand at a little gold panning. Uh, something Alaska is kind of famous for. And this river too. Uh, Ned and I are out here with uh, a couple of gold pans. We've been getting some material off this uh, bank and panning a little and then running it through uh, a five foot sluice uh, that he's brought down here. and. We're trying to get down to the black sand and get the gravel out of the way and separate the gold uh, from uh, the real common material. So this is something I've really never done before, but uh, figure coming up here uh, as many times as I have, I'm kind of crazy if I don't give it a try. So um, I guess we're studying and we're learning and we're going to share with you uh, what we've come up with. And heads down to some black sand and. And his and looks like a little bit of just a flake or two, a little bit of color. That's what we're looking That's for. That's it. So, lots of different ways to do this. You want to try to separate, I'm told, all of the, uh, the dirt out of here and get it down to the, the finest black sand that remains in your gravel and uh, get the gold out. So, what we're doing is kind of panning it down and then running it through the sluice and uh, when you pick it. If you're pretty quick, you're going to clean out the sluice and see if there's any good stuff left behind. big one if I saw it, but uh, mainly what's found in these streams is uh, small particles of gold mixed in with the soil and the gravel. And these uh, river beds are a good place to look because it exposes some, uh, some areas with natural erosion that uh, exposes material that hadn't been looked at for a while. So we're going to take a look today. If we find something, we'll let you know when the season changes. Thanks for coming along. That's just sand, most of that's disappearing, so. You don't put much black sand out of a whole pan, do you? No, no, no. I'd say there's probably, the black sand amounts to about a teaspoonful. Uh, 
Well, you might have started with a whole thing of gravel. I'm just not finding as much gravel as I was the last couple times I was out. Well, it's not like I found a lot, but I did te I did as much as I just did today the other day, and I had what was in that bottle. What you say we're trying to do here is tickle the gold out of this, right? Yeah, when you get down, then you gotta tickle it. Get down to the nitty gritty and you tickle it out of the sand. Here's the black sand up here. You don't see a lot of gold in it. I got some black sand. That's gonna be hard to see in the pan, too. Good old pan, though, man. I think it's been used before. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> Maybe there's some luck in this pan. All the stuff that you want is down in your mats and in your steels. I'm going to tickle this real quick. The gold is heavier than uh, just about all the other el anything in here. elements here, so the sluice is designed to catch. Uh, through erosion, the, the heavy stuff and let the lighter material go on past. So this is what we're down to after uh, several good pans here. Or several pans anyway. <laughs> Don't know how good they are. But we'll fix and find out. Well that pretty well wraps up our gold panning segment for tonight on Season Chasers. And uh, we don't have a big pile of gold to show you. But I've learned that gold panning is just a little bit like fishing. And that uh, you don't always come back with a full limit or a full string or a fish on every outing. But you still have fun. And we had a lot of fun today doing this gold panning. And the more I think about it, the more I wonder if Ned took us to uh, not at one of his greatest places. But uh, he's found gold in several places up here. And uh, we're going to keep trying and keep looking. We might be finding a big one real soon, too. Thanks for coming along on Season Chasers. It looks like we're getting another visit from our friendly fox, Slim Jim. I'm not sure if Slim Jim is his real name, but that's what we call him. I think he likes the smell of that chicken up on the grill. And even while Slim Jim hangs out in the yard, even when he's resting, Keep an eye on those radar ears. They're always at work. If you're really quiet when you're cooking, some Jim will hang out for a while. Hey, buddy. Well, what are you doing? Just coming over to visit? I know you're here because that another robin does crazy every time you come to the Hanging out with the neighborhood fox after a great day of adventure. Next on Season Chasers, a rare moment 
during the Kansas rifle deer season. Many times this pond gets a whole bunch of white caps, but this morning it's really still, and I enjoyed the reflection of those cedar trees. Pretty soon, I was joined by a single male hooded merganser. This variety of waterfowl is a fish eater. It's got a real narrow bill with duck teeth that are designed to hold on to minnows and other small fish. This fellow plays a pretty good job of hide-and-seek in the morning light. Well, needless to say, I didn't get a visit from a shooter deer on this morning, but it really didn't matter, because I had a front row seat to the antics of Mr. Merganser. Tune in each week for some of the stuff you just won't see on other shows. Outdoors, wildlife, and a life of adventure. Being on the lookout for natural foods and making the most of what the wildlife provides. Study learn and share the great outdoors with someone who's important to you.